Today, little things to impress people with. The devil in the detail is a common phrase heard among many, but sometimes it can be forgotten by some modelers. They might have the latest and greatest locos and rolling stock with all the bells and whistles, or just whistles in the UK. But the layouts sometimes don't venture beyond the plonking of scaled down models here and there, with perhaps a little bit of foliage thrown in for good measure. So today I'm going to be showing you just five really cool, really little details that will in fact make your layout just a little bit more interesting and a little bit more detailed, venturing a little further away from the train set. So starting with number one, better buffers. A detail both in aesthetics and functionality. There are the very well known Hornby buffer stops out there, which are somewhat basic and a little bit crude, slash the model alternative to a pug licking piss off of a thistle. But mind you, they are a solitary pound in cost. Then there's the Pico buffer stops, which are better. And with a little bit of fettling, you can make some buffers that can stand out a bit more, and all for the still reasonable two pounds. But for another option, which is slightly less frequently seen, head down the mainly trains route, which have recently become available through Wizard Models. These are white metal casting kits and are a little bit more pricey than the Pico option at a whopping three pounds, but once put together, which can be done fairly quickly, albeit slightly slower than the Pico ones, and then painted up, it will look really rather good. Although a little bit more permanent in installation than the Pico option, and they do require a little bit more work to actually install. If you want to go further still with the level of detail in the buffer stops, you can go to Lanarkshire Models for their white metal buffer stops, which do look magnificent, although they do have the slightly heftier price tag again with a whole £6 asking price. Number two. Mile posts. These are little posts that can be found on the upside of the line. They are there both to assist drivers of locomotives without speedometers fitted to gauge their speed, and also mainly, nowadays at least, to let both drivers and on-track workers know where they are. Each railway had its own style, and even to this day, the older types are still in use in some places. But they are steadily being replaced with major works happening in a lot of areas. This is from a pack of four by Dark Castings and cost £2.40. Each mile post is placed quarter of a mile away from each other, with each of the vertical lines on the bottom side equating to a quarter mile. So one with two lines is half a mile and one with none is a whole mile. So whilst these are cool little details, try not to go over the top with them. In scale terms, these should be placed 5.29 metres apart from each other, which is a scale quarter of a mile. Number three, fences. If you look out in the real world and in historical photographs, you can find that fences are in abundance out there, but are often forgotten about when it comes to modeling. Like the non-rail side of a platform or between tracks and a road, or even just between gardens. And it's not like there are no options out there available. Even just looking on eBay, you're bombarded with as many options as you can think of and for every option, such as walls, hedges, GWR line side fences, large slap fencing, high security palisade fencing, chain link fencing, wooden fencing, and the best thing is, a lot of these aren't expensive either. However, if you start delving a little deeper, you can find some very specific ornate fencing made from etched brass. And that's where the prices will start to rise, but you will be left with some exquisite gates and fencing. Number four boundary markers. Rolling on relatively nicely from the previous post is boundary markers. These were used to mark up to the point where the railways owned the land, and were usually found in areas where fencing at the exact boundary wasn't always a possibility. In real life, these Great Western ones are very attractive little ornaments, and very popular among railway anna collectors. And in miniature, they can be similarly cute little details amongst your little railway world. These were again £2.40 from the wonderful dark castings, and only require a little cleaning up 
and painting to be ready for installation. Number five, manhole covers. These can often be overlooked, as in the real world, they are very easily hidden in plain sight. That is, until one subsides in the road and you hit it in your car, resulting in a hefty bill to the council. But these are another simple addition that yet adds another level of realism without the potential of making a scene look any more crowded by its presence, as some little extra details can do. This set was from Wizard Models and it cost all of about £2.40, which is a pretty decent price and it comes with enough to fulfil a reasonable sized layout. And for something so mundane in real life, they can provide an interesting little detail so often missed. And that's my five. Nice and small, nice and interesting, nice and nice. Better buffers, mileposts, fences, boundary markers and manhole covers. So, with all that done, just one last thing to do. The er uh, count, which today stands at... Let's turn that into pounds and seeing as today everything was line side stuff, the money will go to the Kidderminster Railway Museum, which has a GWR warehouse full of similar stuff. And that wraps it all up for one day. Thanks for watching. Do you have any other small details which you think are really interesting? Let us know in the comment section below and contemplate hitting that subscribe button so you can see any future uploads. Go on, you know you should do.